I have character, paragraph, and text wrap in their own group. So when I click on character, I can tab over to paragraph and text wrap. Again, this is just the way I like to organize my panels. You can use my panel setup or you can create your own. But at the end of the day, the goal is that you have quick access to all of the panels that you use on the regular. Hello, creative. It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. But first, would you like a free cheat sheet? Sir, yes, sir! Head over to graphicsgirl.com to download your free InDesign cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. So in your copy of Adobe InDesign, right up here to the immediate left of the search field, you'll see a dropdown. And it's from this dropdown that you'll see all of the built-in workspaces. So workspaces allow you to see different configurations of the panels with various tools for that function. For example, if you're dealing primarily with setting text, you could come to the topography workspace and it makes sense that InDesign gives you panels for character, paragraph, and things dealing with setting type. So if you're going to be doing digital publishing, those panels are provided. So all of these are what you see in the built-in workspaces that come with the program. But taking a look at what they give you here on the right-hand side of my screen, I'm not particularly happy with giving up this amount of screen real estate to my panels. If you have two monitors, you might decide to keep all of your panels on the right-hand side here on one screen and your workspace on another. But I'm on a very large iMac, so I have one large screen. You'll see on my left-hand side that I put my toolbar in the configuration of one column. So similarly, my workspace on the right-hand side typically looks like this, where all of my tools are down the right-hand side. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and click that double arrow at the top so you can see these panels. So older versions of the program had these individual panels and you would see designers having these panels spread out on a second monitor, for example. And their toolbar on the left-hand side, they could make two columns. So something like this on the left-hand side and something like this are what you would historically see in the program. The reason to make it one column for both your toolbar and your workspace is so that you have the most green real estate in order to see more of your actual layout. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull off my workspace to move it in. I'm going to go ahead and extend it over so that you can really see all of the panels that I like to show in my workspace that I've called GG for Graphics Girl. So this is how I organize my panels. I'm gonna roll over the right-hand side of my workspace to pull it out so that you can really see my setup. But first, would you like a free cheat sheet? Sir, yes sir! Head over to graphicsgirl.com to download your free InDesign cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. This is the order of the panels that I have that I then dock on my right hand side. So I have info, pages, layers, and links all in their own group. You can see here that the group is defined by a bar that appears between. So what does this mean? It means that when you click on one of these panels, the others that are in that same group are tabbed. Organizing your panels in this way allows you to click on it, to select the panel, to view it and use it, 
and then click back on that panel to put it away. Kind of like opening a drawer to a dresser and putting that drawer away. So you can see that you don't need to have all of the panels always omnipresent on your screen when you can just access them and put them away. Now occasionally you might decide, okay, layers, I have a lot of layers going on, so I might want to pull that out, for example. But just as before, all of these panels are completely adjustable in terms of their length. So you could just extend that panel for the layers and still at the same time, open and close that panel so it doesn't take up your screen real estate. Next, I have character, paragraph, and text wrap in their own group. So when I click on character, I can tab over to paragraph and text wrap. Again, this is just the way I like to organize my panels. You can use my panel setup or you can create your own. But at the end of the day, the goal is that you have quick access to all of the panels that you use on the regular. Next, I have a line, stroke, pathfinder, and transform all in their own group. So when you click on the one, you can tab through to the others. So another note with regard to each individual work panel is that the options menu or hamburger menu in the upper right hand corner of any one panel should allow you to show the options in that panel. So for example, when I open up my align panel here, you can see that I have access to all of the options in that panel. Once again, you'll click on it to put away that panel. Next, I like my color, swatches, and gradient all in the same group. Now again, upon occasion, when I'm making a new gradient, sometimes I will pull out that panel so I can more easily toggle between the color and the swatches in order to create that gradient. But just as before, like any other panel, when you grab it, you can click and drag it into that panel exactly where you want to put it. I'm going to show you how you can show each one of these panels to create your own workspace once I finish showing you my setup. So next, I have paragraph styles and character styles. In some recent projects I've worked on, I've added these last two, the object styles and effects panel. All right, so in general, do I keep my panel open where I see the individual name? I generally don't. I grab it by the right and I can bring it in because I now recognize the icons. And as you hover over any one of these, why it gives you the screen tip so that you can become more familiar with that panel and know what that panel does just by hovering over its icon. But in the beginning, if you need a little help to know what that icon represents, why well, you could extend it and keep the name of that panel visible. So this is my setup right here, except for I dock it over onto the right hand side. You can see here as I come over to the right hand side that once I get that light blue highlight that my entire workspace panel can then dock. If you click the upper right hand corner for the double headed arrow Y, you can toggle back between the actual panels and then their icon representation. If you roll between the panel and your workspace, you'll get the double headed arrow. You could always bring it back so that you only see the individual icons. So you can see that it's getting cut off over here on my screen. But this, as you see it right now on my screen, is how I like to set up my interface for InDesign to work most efficiently. When I'm doing tutorials, I'll extend it out so you can always see the name of the panel that I'm accessing. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.